And if there ever was a time that we need to be pressing into him and putting him first in our life, it is now more than ever. Can I get a witness this morning? And God is always faithful and good no matter what's going on in our circumstances, no matter what's going on in the earth. And intimacy with God, I said this last week, intimacy with God, knowing him intimately uh, is really the answer to all of life's problems. I know that sounds pretty simple and, well, I don't know about that. If I had more money, then I would be taken care of. If I just had the right... Uh, 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 man in my life or the woman in my life and uh, you know they had money then I would be taken care of but at the end of the day it is intimacy with God because God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus and it doesn't matter the color of your skin it don't matter the education level that you're at it does not even matter how much money you do or don't have in the bank it does not matter about any of that if we will be intimate with the Lord the Bible says in the book of Joshua that if we will meditate on the Lord, if we will meditate upon his word, if we, will, if we will hide it in our heart, if we will keep it in our heart, if we will not let it depart from our mouth, but we meditate in it day and night, then we will make our way prosperous and then we will have good success. I'm here to tell you that God doesn't put us in classifications like the earth does. God doesn't put us in classifications uh, like society does. Lower class, middle class, upper class. And a lot of times we confine ourselves to a certain class because we don't walk in the kingdom principles of the word of God. And I realize that in the natural, we can be put into a certain class. When you look at your uh, W-2s every year and you look at how much money you make, you fall in a certain class, whether that be lower, upper, or middle. But I'm here to tell you that no matter what class you fall in in the earth, in the kingdom of God, you fall in a class that is seated above, high above every principality and power. And what has happened in the earth today has religion has tried to take over relationship. And there's a lot of people out here today that don't want to have nothing to do with the church because it's all about religion. And there's a lot of people that don't understand kingdom ways and kingdom principles because they are spiritual and they don't make sense to the world. How does it make sense? Even as Jason said that there was a man that gave more, but that, that, that gave and, and got more. How does that make sense in the natural? It doesn't. Why does it make sense to hear somebody shouting and praising God? Most of the time we look at people that do that and say, man, they're a little bit off their rocker. They're a little bit crazy. But maybe they've tapped into something that we haven't tapped into. And there are some crazy cuckoos out there, so don't get me wrong. And I may be labeled one of them sometime. I'm not really sure. But there are spiritual principles principles that we learn through the word of God that sometimes make our natural man and our flesh feel uncomfortable. And worship is one of those. And my sermon today is not about worship, but my sermon today is about the fear of the Lord. We've been talking about it the last couple of weeks, but I believe with all of my heart. No, I don't believe. I know with all of my heart that I am called that I don't know everything, but I'm called to teach us to walk in intimacy with the Lord. I am called by the Lord to, 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 to press in and fan the flame that's in my own heart and see that flame ignited in the body of Christ, to see every person walking not in religion and not in rules, but walking in relationship with a Father that loves them. And when you walk in the place of intimacy, listen, we know it. Religion knows it. God is Alpha and Omega. God is beginning and end. God is the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. He's the bright and morning star. Religion can quote all this stuff, but until you know him intimately and you begin to commune with him and have relationship with him, then we are just walking through religious rituals and practices and we may know how to quote the scripture and we may know how to pray certain prayers but the Pharisees were full of the law and they knew the word and they tithed and they, they prayed their prayers but there was no power in their life. There was no solution to their problems and you know what? I may not be able to fix your problem. Your husband or wife may not be able to fix your problem. But there is a God in heaven that if we will walk with him, if we will talk with him, if we will listen to him, if we will cut out all the distractions and press into him, he has an answer for every issue in your life. He has an answer for every issue in your life. And last week we talked about being a friend of God. 
And a lot of people, including myself, uh, early on had this religious perceptive of God, perception of God. And, uh, you know, I thought that I had to jump through certain hoops, and if I didn't, God would strike me dead. But God is not that type of God. We live in a day and a time. Listen, there is judgment coming. There is a day and a time that we will stand before the Lord. We will give an account for every idle word. We will give an account for what God has called us to do and what did we do uh, with our relationship with His Son that He sent to us. There is a day that is coming. But we live in a day and a time right now where God's grace is there for us. And what he wants us to do is walk in relationship with him. So everything that religious people have judged you about or make you feel a certain way about or have talked about your lifestyle or what you're not doing that does not line up with the word of God. Listen, church, don't hear me wrong. We need to stand for the truth and we need to preach the truth, but not a condemning truth and not stand in the place of pride and want to lord over people, but we need to stand for the truth and we need people to realize that God loves you just as you are. If you will begin to come to him and walk in intimacy with him, he will set you free and reveal the things in your life that are not pleasing to him and those things in our life that are not pleasing to him that may even seem good or feel good are a plan and a tactic of the enemy to keep us from from experiencing the realness and the trueness of the love of a father. Our society and our world and even our church today, we need to learn to walk as what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks in the fear of the Lord because last week we talked about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and that word knowledge means intimacy. It doesn't mean how many Bible scriptures we can quote. It is important that you hide the word in your heart and you quote the word of God and you speak the word of God and that you come in agreement with the word of God, but you have to have this intimate relationship with the Lord. There are tremendous benefits of walking in the fear of the Lord. Now, we've been talking the last few weeks that, 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 that God is trying to reveal to us that we can't lean on our blessings. We need to lean on the blesser. But the Bible tells us in Hebrews eleven six. now faith is uh, the only thing that pleases God, that without faith it is impossible to please God, but those that come to him, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, God really does want to reward us, and he wants to bless us with abundance, and he wants to bless us with his blessings. And there's a lot of people that walk in the blessings of God, but don't have any fear of the Lord in their life. There's a lot of people that, 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 that have seen the hand of God, but they don't know the ways of God. We talked about that last week. And therefore, they're blessed right out of their kingdom calling. They're bl- blessed right out of the, the place that they are supposed to be walking in. They're blessed right out of that place. And today, I want to take a few minutes that I feel the Lord has put on my heart that I want to talk about the blessings of holy fear. The blessings of fearing God. We can all agree this morning that there is a lot of fear in the earth. There's a lot of fear probably even in our life right now. The, the, the fear that came even through a pandemic or a crisis or the things that, that are going on uh, was a hot topic and a theme for the church. Everybody was talking about fear, overcoming fear, and rightfully so. Because there is a healthy fear and there is an unhealthy fear. And that's what we've been talking about the last few weeks. But it has been said through many people, even through this pandemic that's going on, that fear is trying to get on the church. Fear is resting on a nation. Fear is resting on a world. There is, there is fear for some more than others. And this fear can be very demonic. It can be very dark. It can put us in a place of depression. It can call us to draw back and not walk in the things that God has called us to walk in and think that maybe, well, God's promise is not true anymore and this is not going to happen and all these things that happen with fear. I'm reminded that even in the Gospels that Jesus said the disciples were seized because of fear. Now, when we talk about being seized, we're talking about not moving forward. I used to work on engines, and when I worked on engines, when a bearing seized up in an engine, that thing is not going to turn anymore because it is seized up. And, and, and the scripture even says that the disciples were seized with fear. 
stopped in their tracks. And there is a fear that's trying to get on the church and the body of Christ. We've been talking about that for a long time. There is, there is this fear that we often have to continue to focus on and we have to continue to fight. How many, how many feel like you're just tired of fighting fear and sometimes you throw up your hands and say, I'm over it. I've seen a person this weekend trying to get their mask on and they like threw it and said, I'm over it. <laughs> Forget it. If I die, I die. I guess that was their, that was their, that was their, that was their heart or their, their, their frustration or whatever it is. Like, I'm just over this. But I was thinking about this thing of fear and how fear tries to grip us and fear tries to seize us. And when it comes into what we're even talking about, the fear of the Lord, how the fear of man opposes the fear of God. I want you to think about this for a minute. The fear of man, the fear of sickness, the fear of disease, the fear of, uh, uh, of, of, of failure, the fear of uncertainty often opposes the fear of God. And God was even speaking to me that sometimes I'm so focused fighting on the fear that is out there that it opposes the fear of God. And I'm doing everything I can to fight fear off. And listen, I, I, I believe in that. I believe believe in spiritual warfare, but the Lord was just speaking to me that that fear of man and the fear of the things of the earth opposes the fear of God that a lot of times we can focus even as spirit-filled people that know the word, standing up on our feet, rebuking fear, declaring God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is so important, but sometimes we can so focus on that, that the fear of something bad happening to us and trying to to fight that off spiritually that it even opposes the fear of God. Because there are tremendous blessings when we begin to understand the fear of the Lord and we begin to walk in the fear of the Lord. This isn't just a season that we're in. This just isn't a good sermon that I'm teaching. The word of the Lord, and y'all know I don't say that a lot, but the word of the Lord to us is that we are to begin to bow our hearts and begin to fear the Lord and ask the Lord to teach us to walk in the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of man opposes the fear of God and the fear of man brings a snare. It traps us. And even in standing and rebuking the spirit of fear, I'm not telling you not to do that anymore. What I'm telling you to do is to do that, but in the midst of that, don't let that so consume you that you're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is the only thing that will help us to overcome the fear of man. And the Bible tells us this in Proverbs 29, verse 25, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever... Red, yellow, black, or white, broke, rich, or poor, low class, middle class, upper class. Throw all that out the window and realize that you're in the kingdom class. Realize that you are a son or a daughter of the king. You are a son or a daughter of a king that loves to give good gifts unto his children. We've got to realize as the church of Jesus Christ that we can't just walk in religious ways and spiritual pride and be looking down upon people in this season of of life, but people are looking for the real thing. And if they are going to experience the real thing, we've got to be the real thing because it is Him in us, the hope of glory. It is the King of glory in us being released into the earth through the love of the Father in our life. And the Bible says, Whoever, listen to what he, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe shall be safe. That is so powerful. See, we've been talking about this fear of God because a lot of people have never heard a sermon on the fear of God, never talked about, heard somebody talk about the fear of God or misunderstood the fear of God. Now, the fear of God includes what I'm about to tell you, but it's not limited to. I don't know everything about the fear of God. I will probably know, never know everything about the fear of God until I, am, uh, until I meet Him and spend eternity with Him. And I'm not declaring that I know everything about the fear of God. There are layers, there's aspects, there's greater revelation that God wants to bring in our life. But I believe the foundational place is where we've got to start. And the fear of God includes, but it's not limited to, and it is this. And I've said this the last two weeks, and I want to say it again. The fear of God is respecting and reverencing Him in every area of our life, not just on a Sunday morning. 
every area of our life, every moment of our life, every day of our life, that we respect Him and we reverence Him. That means we put Him first in our relationships. We put Him first in our marriages. We put Him first in our families. We put Him before anything else. For we are told to tremble in His presence, to tremble at His word. That doesn't mean that we're to be afraid that God's going to strike us down, that we can't be in His presence. It's not that we are to be uh, afraid of His presence. It's that we're to tremble that we don't want to be anywhere away from His presence. There is a shift that has to take place, but religion has held people in bondage and, 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 and made them think that the way they must fear God is, a, is maybe they have to hide until they try to get this figured out. They may have to hide until they get this cleaned up. But no, the fear of God is trembling that I don't want to be anywhere else other than in your presence because the only way I'm going to overcome this addiction is by your presence. The only way I'm going to overcome this mental thing that I'm dealing with and the anger that you may be dealing with. The only way that you're going to be able to overcome it is to become a friend of God and begin to walk in his walk in the fear of the Lord and begin to know him and allow his presence and power to begin to heal you of that anger, to begin to heal you of that wound that goes back to maybe when you were a child and you feel like the things that you're facing are repeating over and over and over and you can bring it all the way back to something that happened to you when you were a child. God in his love and his power can heal you in that place that you may not never be able to 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 forget it but the memories that you have of it that you realize that even in that place where the enemy meant to destroy you God will redeem you and he will fill you and he will bring joy and peace into your life. I just feel by the Spirit of the Lord, somebody has said in their heart, they're not worthy of it. That is a lie of the enemy. That is a lie of the enemy. I just feel in my heart that somebody has said, I'm not worthy of it, and this is what I deserve because of what I did a long time ago. Can I tell you, that is a religious lie of the devil. God is a redeeming God. And if we will fear him, respect him, and reverence him, listen, he is worthy of reverence. He is worthy of praise no matter what our lifestyle is, no matter what's going on in our life. I I, I don't know about you, but I've even felt it before early on in my I walk with God. I said, you know what? I just had a bad morning and here I am going to church. How can I worship God when I was out there cussing and doing this and everything else before I got here? I got angry. I got upset. Yes, I love God and I want to turn my life around, but how can I really praise God with everything that I've just been doing? Can I tell you something? That is another religious lie of the enemy because when we fear God, we respect Him and honor Him no matter what is in our life, but Because he is worthy. He is worthy. And it doesn't mean that we can go fake it and we can just say, Hey, pastor said that no matter what I'm living in, I can praise the Lord and act like everything's good. No, that's not what I'm saying. The Bible says those that will worship him in spirit and truth is the ones he is looking for. And I'm here to tell you that you can have turmoil in your life, chaos in your life. You can have things in your life that, that you know are not pleasing to God. But if you will connect with him on a heart level and you will honor him and reverence him his power will come into your life and the things that used to taste good won't taste good anymore I can't explain it but it's supernatural it is a supernatural God we serve that when we begin to taste and see that the Lord is good that nothing else will be able to satisfy the taste buds in our life There is an entire church, there is an entire community that needs not religion and the religion of men. They need the intimacy of the Father. They need to encounter what we were talking about Wednesday night, the glory of God. The glory of God, the fear of God includes, but it's really not limited to, respecting and reverencing Him. Holy fear gives God the place of glory. It gives him the place of glory. It gives him a place of honor and reverence and thanksgiving and praise that he deserves. He deserves. Notice that it's not what we think he deserves. It's what he deserves. It's what he deserves. 
Listen, if we want the presence of God, if we want the presence of God, we need the reverence of God. Well, how are we going to get people saved? How are we going to get people discipled? How are we going to do this? Pastor, how are we going to do that? We all have these questions, and God wants to lead us, and God wants to show us, but it begins with the presence of God. And the presence of God begins with the reverence of God. If we can reverence Him, if we can reverence Him in our individual time, if we can reverence Him in our personal time, because the reality is, is you will serve whom you fear. You will serve whom you fear. If you fear God, you will serve Him. If we fear God, we will serve Him. If we fear man, we will serve man. That's what happens. Uh, You you know, people say money talks. And yes, I guess so. Money talks and this kind of thing. And we we have this this need to make ends meet. And I, I understand that. And that is important. But a lot of times we fear and we reverence the almighty dollar more than we reverence God. And we find ourselves hurting. We find ourselves burnt out. We find ourselves frustrated. We find ourselves on the hamster wheel. And it feels like that we've got to keep tolling and we've got to get work, keep working. And yes, we do. But, but, but there is a place of rest that when we fear God and serve God, He will take care of all of our needs. And it doesn't mean that we just lay around and be lazy and say, you know, Pastor said all i got to do is lay around here and reverence God all day. And, There's some people that are on, maybe not that level, but there's some people that just hear from God and go do what he says. And we all should be in a place that we are walking in, that that's our heart, that we just want to hear from God and do what he says. You know, I think about, I'm going to share with you, This morning, the blessings of fearing God. Why is it so important that we reverence Him, that we honor Him? We've already said because those that reverence Him are a friend to Him. Those that reverence Him know His ways. We talked about that with Moses last week. And Proverbs is full of wisdom. And we know Solomon wrote Proverbs. And we know the story of Proverbs and or or the story of Solomon. If you don't, then you need to go back and study his life. But I think we can learn a lot about fearing the Lord. He wrote a lot of things in the book of Proverbs when it comes to fearing the Lord, but Solomon actually lived at both extremes. He lived a time in his life where he feared God, and when he feared God and he walked in the fear of God, reverence, putting nothing before God, honoring God in every part of his life, honoring God with his money, honoring God with his relationships, honoring God with his talents and his time, honoring God. See, fearing the Lord has to do not with just church attendance. Fearing the Lord has to do with what are you doing with your money that's honoring God. The fear of the Lord is what am I doing with my time that is honoring God. See, God wants all of our heart that we were singing about this morning because when He has your heart, He has your gifts, He has your time, He has your talents, He has everything. He's not just trying to get one thing from you because that's how we live as Christians many times. We're not walking in the fear of God. We're compartmentalizing God and we're saying you can have this part, but God don't touch this part. If we're in that place, we're not really walking in the fear of the Lord and therefore we are fragmented and when we are not frag- when we are fragmented and we're split and our affection is divided in certain areas and we say, God, you can have this department, but you can't have this department. God, you can do this and God, I'll do that, but God, I'm not doing this. And, you know, on and on and on. When we do that, God only has part of us and therefore we only walk in part of what he wants us to walk in. And God wants all of us, and when he has all of us, then we know that we're walking in the fear of the Lord. We know that we are truly walking in the fear of the Lord. Can I stand up here today and say, listen, hey, I'm walking in every area of my life in the fear of the Lord. No, that would be a lie. There's areas that God is dealing with me about, things God's dealing with me about. Am I living in sin? Am I looking at pornography and all that other kind of stuff? Absolutely not by the grace of God. But can I get an attitude toward the church sometimes, even though I love the church and even though I'm called to help equip the saints for the work of the ministry? Absolutely. Sometimes I can get a little bit of an attitude when people can go everywhere else but join together in the house of God. 
I, I'm just telling you, I have to guard my heart because Jesus just looks on people with compassion. But when, 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 when people can go ride roller coaster rides and go to the beach and go out to eat, but man, we can't go to the house of God. I'm like, oh, come on, somebody. Like, what's, what's really going on here? And I get an attitude, and I need an attitude adjustment. Anyway, I'm done with that. There's some more stuff I want to say, but I just want to honor the Lord. Because <laughs> I was that way one time, too. We're all human. But anyway, Solomon lived kind of at both extremes. He, he feared God. He had great success. He wrote the Proverbs. But something took a turn in his heart. And the fear of God began to diminish in his heart. And he began to marry foreign women. And when he would marry them, you know what? He began to serve their gods. He no longer obeyed the commands of God. And he faced great hardships. And when you come to the end of his life, I know there's been controversy over this. Did he really write Ecclesiastes? Some people say, yeah, it points that he did. Some other people say that he don't. But what if he did? What if he really wrote the book of the Ecclesiastes at the end of his life? And if he did, listen, Solomon examines his life apart from the fear of the Lord. That's what Ecclesiastes is all about. All this is vanity, vanity, vanity. Y'all remember, have you ever read Ecclesiastes? Times and seasons, vanity, vanity, vanity. His response to every question was vanity, vanity, vanity. And at the end of the book in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13, verse 13, it says this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Here is a king, here is, here is Solomon that, that feared God. He was wise. He, he, he asked for the wisdom of the Lord. And Proverbs is full of the fear of God and, you know, keeping the word of God in our heart and walking in the word of God. And how can a young man keep his ways and all these things, all this great wisdom. Yet he let the fear of the Lord wane out of his life. And he began to have other lovers other than the Lord. And he began to marry foreign women and he began to worship their God and not obey the commands of the Lord but at the end of his life after seeing it all he says let us hear the conclusion of this whole matter he says fear God and keep his commandments for this is man's all the scriptures are full of why the fear of the Lord is so important in our life because the fear of the Lord produces things that we cannot produce the fear of the Lord produces things that we cannot produce. It helps us to walk in relationship and not religion. Why? Because religion brings bondage and relationship produces liberty. It produces liberty. So I want to walk through a, a few scriptures today because the, the title of this sermon is The Blessing of the Fear of God. What is associated with the fear of God? And why is the fear of God reverence in Him, putting Him first, honoring Him, worshiping Him in every area of our life? What does it produce in our life? And as I read through these things, uh, these scriptures today, these are just a few. The Bible is full of them. I would encourage you to begin to, begin to get a concordance or a Google concordance or whatever and just look up the, the, the scriptures on fearing God and the fear of the Lord and get those into your heart. Because when we share a few of these today, there are some things that the fear of God produces in our life. And I am I'm going to be bold enough to go as far as this to say, for my own life personally, if I'm not experiencing these things in my life, if I'm not experiencing the fullness and the blessing of God, it has nothing to do with my mama or my daddy. It has nothing to do with my boss. It has nothing to do with my spouse. It does not have nothing to do with my pastor. It does not have nothing to do with the government. It does not have anything to do with my job. It has nothing to do because when you walk in relationship with the Father, even though your father, mother and father on this earth will forsake you, He will take you in. 
And if I am lacking in a certain area in my life, it has nothing. I know that sometimes seems insensitive and hard to say, but the reality is let that be freeing to you that no matter what somebody did or did not do to you in your life cannot hold you in a place of bondage because your Father loves you enough that no matter what you had to face and go through, He will redeem you from it and raise you up. He will turn your grave into... Your, your grave into a garden. He will turn your beauty, your ashes to beauty. He will turn your hopelessness to hope. He will do the impossible in your life and we've got to get to a point and a place that we realize that we cannot blame anybody that no matter what has happened in our life, God is still faithful and He will bring us through. I have to go back to realize that you know what? Any failure or lack in my life is not on anybody else but me. It's on me. If I'm not experiencing the power of God, it has nothing to do with God and has everything to do with me. Can I tell you, if you are bored out of your mind this morning and you think God is boring, God is not boring, you are boring. i got to keep it in my notes. Well, I just can't go to that prayer meeting, man. That prayer meeting is boring. They sing the same song over and over and over and over again. You just revealed your heart. Lord, help me, Jesus. Please help me, God. Come on, stretch your hands this way right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, help my pastor. Help my pastor in Jesus' name. Bunch of hypocrites. I can't go over there with a bunch of hypocrites. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the lie and the scheme of the enemy to keep people from connecting with the heart of the Father. The only one that can set us free. What are the benefits and the blessings? That's all I wanted to talk about. Just want to talk. This is an encouraging message so that when we walk out of here, my whole goal and purpose is that we would be stirred up to such a place that we would go and fall on our face and say, God, teach me to walk in holy fear. That is the whole purpose when I was praying through and preparing this sermon is that it would so stir our hearts that when we leave here, we would all throughout this week just be meditating and asking Holy Spirit, teach me to walk in your fear. So let me get to the blessings, the fear of God and what it produces in our life. It produces things that we cannot produce. The fear of God actually positions our heart to receive answers. Come on, you may be in here this morning, you you feel like I ain't getting no answers. God is silent. God is this. It makes you want to draw back. It makes you not really want to worship. I really don't feel like worshiping right now. But if you will fear God and you will honor Him and reverence Him, even in a time and a season that you feel like you are not receiving any answers, your pastor may not have the answer, your spiritual father or mother may not have the answer, but there is a God in heaven who has the answer. And you know what? When you fear God, you position your heart to receive answers. Listen, if it just came easy, everybody would be doing it. If it just came easy, I can't tell you over the seven years how many people I've seen come through these doors that are not here today because they were in a tough situation and we began to love them and begin to be there for them and begin to give them the word of God and begin to carry them with prayers. But there came a point that they did not begin to carry themselves and begin to press in and keep on and say that, you know what, I'm going to continue to honor the Lord and I'm going to continue to hold on to his promise no matter what. What's going on because I know that he is faithful and if it takes me three days or three decades I'm not letting go of the promise of God sometimes we have to fight for what God has already given for us because there's a real devil of discouragement that will try to hold it up and try to make us think that it ain't never gonna happen so therefore we walk out on the very thing that can help us to bring the breakthrough in our life I can't tell you how many people have come and they've walked away and they're not even in the fellowship with other believers anymore because it wasn't an instant pot. It wasn't an Instagram. It wasn't instant right now. It just wasn't instant enough for them and they did not want to work out their salvation. Listen, when we fear God, it positions our heart to receive answers. 
Jesus in Matthew, uh, actually Hebrews chapter 5, I read this last week, who in the days of his flesh, talking about Jesus, when he had offered, offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. God heard his cry because of his godly fear and therefore because he was walking in the fear of God and crying out from a place of fear Fear of God, fearing his father, reverencing his father, he received answers in his life. Listen, if you want answers, the answers come from the presence of the Lord. They come through the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Paul prayed it over the churches. That's one of the benefits and the blessings of walking in the fear of the Lord. The second one I want to give you is this, is in Psalms 31 and 19. It assures that God's great goodness abounds in your life that it abounds in your life it doesn't mean you're not going to have a trial or a tribulation but in the midst of it his goodness will abound his goodness and mercy will endure forever psalms 31 and 19 oh how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you think about that oh how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those that fear you. Listen, when we fear God, there is a release of goodness no matter what's going on in the earth. Listen, that goodness actually has already been released over 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked on the face of the earth and when he defeated death, hell, and the grave and he gave us authority back. And when we fear God and walk in the authority, the goodness of God that's being held up, whether it's something we did or didn't do, whether it's something spiritual, that, that when, we, when we fear him, the goodness of God abounds in our life. Listen, that's why the fear of man opposes the fear of God. Especially in the day and the time we live in. People are not even fulfilling their call of God on their life because they're too afraid. Oh, I can't go there and do that. I might get the corona sickness. That's what people think. Listen, don't hear me wrong. The, the sickness is very real. Listen, my mother was very sick in February. They weren't testing for corona. I told my mom, I said, you know... I really think that you had this. And most people think that she had that. And she said, well, based on everything they're saying, I think that I probably had it too. I said, Mom, I think you can go and they can test your blood and get the platelets or something and see, see if you had the corona. We can find out. And she looked at me and she said, I am not going anywhere near that place unless I have to. I don't care about that. You know what I mean? Forget that. So, so all I'm saying is this, is that it is very real I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I know of people that have lost their life, and yes, they had underlying conditions and all these type of things. I'm not getting into the politicalness of it. Yes, I have my opinion, but I will not share my opinion right here with everybody. If we're in a private conversation, I may share my opinion, but all I'm saying is this, is that we cannot let fear stop us. Yes, we have to be wise. Yes, we have to wash our hands. Yes, we have to do certain things that we have to do. But listen, the fear of sickness, the fear of disease, it's been happening for many, many years. Fear will try to grip us and try to hold us back. But you know what? The fear of God should be greater than the fear of man, the fear of sickness, the fear of disease. Because in the midst of that, God's goodness will abound in our life when we fear him above anything else. Listen, God will take care of you. If your job runs out, God will give you another job. If you will fear him, God will do it. I've seen it even in my own life time and time again. That's why the fear of the Lord is so important. Let me keep going. Psalms 34 and 7. The fear of God promises angelic protection. The fear of God promises the angelic protection in our life. Looking around, seeing all who's in here. They ain't in here today. But anyway, there's somebody that's a part of our church. And I have to tell them all the time, man, you keep your angels busy. You are climbing on these ladders and flip-flops. And you probably figured out who that is when I say that. You're climbing on these ladders and flip-flops. You're setting up scaffolding 85,000 feet high. You're hanging off with a paintbrush and doing this. I said, man, you really keep your angels busy. 
Listen, there are the angels of the Lord for us. There are angelic. I was thinking about it the other day. I've never, I'm not, Lord, what is wrong with me? I've been pastoring this church seven years, and I've never taught on angels. And it is so important. Listen, angels, the angelic presence that God gives us, the, 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 when we fear God, it promises angelic protection. I have testimony, and many of you may do too, testimony after testimony of things that almost happened in my life, but it was a miracle that di it didn't. I've had cars coming at me head on before, and I'm like, how in, whoa, what in the world just happened? It was almost like God parted the seas, and I'm like, there must have been an angel or something. There must have been the hand of Jesus. I don't know what is going on, but there is angelic protection for those that fear him. Psalms 34 and 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers him. There are people, listen, God does not, how do I say this? There, 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 a lot of times people want the uh, blessings of God without walking in the principles of God. There are some people that can rebuke the devil all day long, but they're not fearing God because they are putting certain things in their life above the Lord. They are putting certain things in their life that, that does not line up with the Word of God because they are not fearing God, and they can pray prayers. I, I was thinking about the other day. I pray that all the time. Let the angels of the Lord be encamped about us. But the way the angels of the Lord are encamped about us, we can say that all day long, but until we walk in the fear of the Lord, church, we've got to get back to this place of fearing God because it is not just a prayer we pray. And I'm telling you, I pray that prayer all the time. But if I want to see the angelic protection in my life, I must walk in the fear of the Lord. I must reverence him. There is angelic protection in the midst of a pandemic. There is angelic protection in the midst of uncertainty in the economy. It is a blessing of walking in the fear of the Lord. The next one I want to share is Psalms 33 and 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. What does this do when we fear God? It secures God's continual attention in our life. It's secure. How many has ever been in trouble? And when you've been in trouble, I mean, you need some help. What do you try to do? Get somebody's attention. The other day, I was down in the basement, and I needed a hand. I needed some help. And I'm yelling, hey! I'm trying to get somebody's attention. Little feet running back and forth up there. Nobody paying attention to me. I get a little bit louder. Hey! I'm trying to get the attention. But the Bible says, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. And he is watching over us and those who hope in his mercy. The fear of the Lord brings supernatural provision into our life. Psalms 34 9 says, O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. There's no want to those that fear him. If I ever find myself in a place that I'm just wanting, wanting, wanting. I have to examine, am I really fearing the Lord? Because when you fear him, he says, there is no want to those who fear him. There is supernatural provision. The fear of the Lord contains great mercy. Remember last week that I said the fear of the Lord is the treasure of the Lord? It's his treasures. And in his treasure is everything that you need. In his treasures, everything you need. And the fear of the Lord contains great mercy. Psalms 103 and 11 4 says, As the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. Listen, I don't, I don't, there are things that are happening in the earth, y'all. There are things that are happening that I believe that are happening because we have not feared the Lord and we have not, we have turned our back upon the Lord. I think that whenever a nation, the Bible says, begins to shed innocent blood, we better begin to get back to the place of the fear of God because there is a holy God in heaven that is just waiting when the old, whole earth begins to tremble. But the Bible says there are great mercies for those that fear the Lord. I believe back in the day when the, when the housing market crashed, in 07, 08, somewhere around that time uh, because I was, listen, not perfect and not walking in the fear of the Lord perfectly, but because I was fearing the Lord, I never missed a beat. I sold a house and made money off of it when everybody else said, you can't do that. But I wasn't a part of the low class or the middle class or the high class. I was a part of the kingdom class. And I said, God... 
I said, God, if I am hearing you and you are speaking to me, you will, you will part whatever you got to part and you will do whatever you got to do. Not because I'm special and not because I've been to Bible school and not because I've been called as a pastor and not because of this, but because we fear the Lord. Some people think, well, God can't bless me unless I know enough scripture. Listen, you need to know the scripture, but you're not really going to know the scripture until you fear the Lord. And there is protection and there is provision. And even though bad things may be happening around you, there is great mercy for those who fear the Lord. Do you know the Bible actually tells us that if we fear the Lord, we'll, we will be assured of food? How many has got a lot of food that you've already stacked up? You don't got to lift your hands. It's okay to prepare. It's okay to prepare. I'm not saying it's not. You might have got a bunch of bullets and all that kind of stuff because you need to kill some rabbits. I don't know. I'm just saying. There is wisdom and pe preparation. I'm not saying there's not. But you know what? Even if you don't, listen, it's important that you're prepared for whatever it is. I'm talking spiritually prepared. And God will lead you to prepare for things in the natural. But when you fear the Lord, the Bible actually says you will be assured of food. Psalms 111 and 5 says he has given food to those who fear him. Listen, when the world starts falling apart, some of us think that it already is. When the world starts falling apart, church, we better not fall apart with it. We better be walking in the fear of the Lord. Listen, when your bank account crumbles... I'm not prophesying doom and gloom. I'm not, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying this. Is going, I, I, I don't know. Jesus, the Bible says that, that nobody knows the time when Jesus is coming back. But Jesus said that there will be some uncertainties before he comes. If you study the scriptures, you will see that there will be things that will begin to happen and things that will unfold. And we're seeing those things now. We're seeing destruction. We're seeing earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars. We're seeing all these offenses, all these things happening, hatred evil. You, you see people turning on each other and even the church turning on each other in some degree. Listen, I, I, I'm just saying this. When the economy fails, when the government fails, when man fails... Listen, when, 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 when stocks fall, when, when an economic system crumbles, when, 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 when if, and I pray it never happens, but if the electricity or the internet, listen, the internet went out on me when I was in Kingsport on Friday afternoon, and you would have thought that we all were going to die. We could not function. We were like, we are in a town that we don't know where nothing is, and we can't call the pastor. Uh, we can't call the pastor right now because our service don't work, and we can't call our friends right now, and we don't even know how to find the, we don't even know how to find the Dunkin' Donuts, or we don't know, even know how to find the, the this or that. Why? Because the internet done failed on us. And we start falling apart. I'm talking about me. Start, how, how are we going to get home? We don't know the way back to get home and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just saying that when things fall and things fail, and even if there's no electricity or anything else, listen, we better be in a place in our life. Hear the word of the Lord. We better be in a place in our life that we realize if we walk in the fear of God, He will angelically protect us. He will provide for us. He will assure us of food. He has given food to those who fear him. He will even be mindful of his covenant. The fear of the Lord. i got to hurry. The fear of the Lord promises protection. Psalms 115 and 11. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The blessing of the fear of the Lord, it fulfills our desire and delivers us from harm. So many times we're looking for our desire to be fulfilled. How do I fulfill this desire if I just had the right car, if I just had the right job, if I just had the right woman, if I just had the right this, if I just had the right that? But you know what? The Bible tells us plainly and clearly in Psalms 145 and 19, He will fulfill the desire of those who fear Him. He also will hear their cry and He will save them. The fear of the Lord fulfills our desire and delivers us from harm. The fear of the Lord, according to Proverbs 9, 10 through 11, it provides wisdom. The fear of the Lord provides wisdom, provides understanding, and it actually gives years to our life. Proverbs 9, 10 and 11, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. 
For by me, your days will be multiplied and your years of life will be added to you. And years of life will be added to you. The fear of the Lord, the blessing of the fear of the Lord is our confidence and protection even in the face of death. Even in the face of death, Proverbs 14, 26 and 27, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. That's what we need in the church today, strong confidence, strong confidence in his word, strong confidence in his prom- promise. And it says this strong confidence is found in the fear of the Lord and his children will have a place of refuge. It's so deep and rich, it's so good. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. The fear of the Lord provides peace of mind. Proverbs 15 and 16 says, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasures with trouble. The fear of the Lord results in complete, complete satisfaction. Proverbs 19 and 23, The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. I gotta, I gotta just keep going. I want to preach on all these. Come play a little something for me, so I'll hurry up. Leads to riches, honor, and life. The fear of the Lord leads to riches, honor, and life. Proverbs twenty-two and four. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. You know what the fear of the Lord will do? It will keep us on the path. Jeremiah 32 and 40, it says this, And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. The fear of the Lord provides clarity and direction. I mean, we've complicated the gospel, but it's so simple if we will just Worship him and get in his presence. How many like me? You just get fidgety. You just like, come on, you got to put your phone aside. You be in the middle of worship and then you're going to check your Facebook real quick. No, 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 no. When you're looking for clarity, when you're looking for clarity, when you're looking for direction, Psalms 25 and 12 says, Who is the man that fears the Lord? Who is this man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he chooses. The fear of the, the, fear of the Lord res, results in enjoyment of our labor and a full and rewarding life. Psalms 128, verse 1 through 4. I'm actually going to read this in the New Living Translation. It says this, How happy are those who fear the Lord, all who follow his ways. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. How happy you will be. How rich your life. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine. All the men said amen. Well, my wife won't do this and my wife won't do that. And blah, 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 blah. Are you on your face before the Lord? Are you a man that fears God? Are you leading your family in the ways of the Lord? Are you leading them in the place of worship in your home? Well, they don't want to do this and they don't want to do that. Well, if they don't, don't let that stop you from fearing the Lord and honoring Him. Because the Lord says, His Word says, Happy will you be, how rich your life, your wife will be like a fruitful vine, flourishing within your home. And look at all those children. They will sit around your table as vigorous and healthy as young olive trees. That is the Lord's reward for those who fear. Fear him. 